Good afternoon. Strange weather indeed. It was literally just yesterday where we had this crazy heat wave for a few days. And now we are resuming our fall weather. We're talking mid 50s with a high of 80s, which is perfect for you and I. And perfect for tropical fruit trees. You know, you would think tropical fruit trees, the, the best time for them to grow would be like summer. No. The best time for these guys to grow is fall. I say that just because summer, these guys spend a lot of energy in the Central Valley, keeping themselves cool. Keeping themselves cool expends a lot of energy for these guys, which is why they don't grow a whole lot. They grow just not a whole lot. So fall is really the, the, the time of the year where these guys just, you know, grow wild just because it, it's, it's relatively cool with plenty of sun uh, and the nights aren't so bad. So that's what a lot of the tropicals are doing. Today I wanted to talk about though a few trees I've got in the yard which does great in the Central Valley. And for the most part, you don't have to worry about feeding them nitrogen. So nitrogen is perhaps the most abundant particles in our atmosphere. I mean, like literally 78% of our atmosphere, the air that you and I breathe, is made out of nitrogen. Unfortunately, that particular, type, that particular type of atmospheric nitrogen, these guys can't absorb. Yeah, they, they, can't, they can't suck in nitrogen from the air. The same way you and I can't breathe in water, even the water has, you know, oxygen atoms in them. Two hydrogen bonded with one oxygen. It's got oxygen, but you and I can't breathe it because we don't have gills. Maybe some of you can, but I know most of us can't. So these nitrogen fixing trees that I want to talk about. Yeah, let me show you. Most fertilizer, actually probably all fertilizers that you are going to get, has a, a number on them. In this case, 555, five, five. so that's a, a balanced uh, food for most tropical fruit trees. The first part, of course, is indication of the amount of nitrogen that this fertilizer has. Guaranteed nitrogen, that is, uh, as well as ph uh, phosphorus and potassium. So nitrogen arguably is the most important food, nutrient for uh, tropical fruit trees. These fruit trees that I'm about to cover, you do not need to feed a nitrogen. I say that because there exists a special bond, a special relationship between the tree and certain type of bacteria that is all underneath us basically and it makes it so where even though the trees can't breathe in nitrogen okay with the help of these bacteria the bacteria has a process to enzyme to the enzyme that it produces of converting these atmospheric nitrogen into usable nutrient for these trees it's, it's a great symbiotic relationship. So, the first tree that I want to cover is going to be these, this guy right here. You ready? So check it out. Look at him. Towering above me, right here. 
Ah, it's got thorns. <laughs> it doesn't like uh, it doesn't like to be touched. But this is what's known as commonly known as a uh, Manila tamarind, also known as um, Guamachil in um, the Latin America air, air, uh, regions. But yeah. So here's the thing with uh, nitrogen fixing trees. Okay, for the most part. They are like insanely fast grower. This guy, you're talking, it's just been in the ground a little over a year. And it's a good 15 feet tall. Yeah. So, yeah, just, just something about nitrogen fixing trees. Uh, they, they grow at an insane rate. Now, the cool thing about uh, the nitrogen fixing tree, of course, is as I prune the leaves uh, and I prune the branches, um, they all, of course, the nutrient that's uh, in those foliage and the branches get then recycled and then, of course, it gets made available to the nearby tree. So it's a great, it's a great tree. So, so that's one. So I, I should mention, <laughs> in addition to the tree essentially feeding itself uh, with nitrogen, it produces these fruits that are like bean pods. I like the taste. Some people say it's bland, but if you get the right ones, they are incredibly, incredibly delicious, especially the ripe ones. They, they are really good. So yeah, I mean, these grow practically wild in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, it, it, it does great here when established when that size which again is only like going a year old when it's young i would recommend that you maybe shelter it for the first winter uh, they are purported to be frost sensitive um but mine really hasn't been you know too freaked out because of the frost so manila tamarind aka gumachio another tree here so actually if you uh, go out over there, I'm gonna try to see if I can show you. So, all right, from this angle. <laughs> it is, well, let me see if I can get out here. Well, not this guy, but <laughs> this guy, the Inga. Also a nitrogen fixing tree, special relationship between it and the bacteria in the ground. Bacteria feeds it nitrogen. It in return feeds bacteria sugar. A lot like the mycorrhizal network, except it's not fungus, it's bacteria. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> awesome tree. Also another super fast grower, okay? Uh, I mean, you're, you're talking, this tree, really, it's, it's only been in the ground going four years, technically. I say technically just because the first couple of years, it died down twice, down to the roots, and it made a great comeback, as you can see. It, it's now literally my main tree. I mean, without this tree, I, I can guarantee you just about all the more sensitive seedlings that I've got down there, the durian, the purple mangosteen, the rambutans. I'm fairly certain none of those would be able to make it. Just because, so you, you've got to think, okay, so with that particular tree, nitrogen fixing, which again is due to the special relationship between it and um, the bacteria. The tree itself, also has other methods of obtaining nutrients through the wood wide web network which it is attached to in my yard which is the sharing of communication and resources via the different trees connected to my you know the wood wide web and also the mycorrhizal network where the trees give the fungus sugar the fungus gives the tree nutrients so 
a, a lot of you may commingle the two. Nutrient and sugar, two different things, okay? Think of it as nutrient for the trees, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Those are not, the trees don't really convert that into energy. Unlike you and I, where we eat food, we indirectly convert it into uh, energy, you know, to our metabolism process. Trees don't do that. Those nutrients are the building blocks for the trees. That, that's how they are able, able to build the cell walls, the structure of the foliage, the chloroplasts, all that stuff that's needed by trees. The sugar is derived from mostly the sun. So th there's a distinction there. So it, it's essentially a trade-off between the trees giving sugar which again the tree generates from the sun photosynthesis uh, to the microorganisms um, bacteria in this case uh, and in return bacteria gives it uh, the nutrients that um, nitrogen uh, that the tree uh, absolutely needs it's a win-win so i'm gonna go and take you to the uh, front now where i got an example to show you all right so front yard so another tree that is nitrogen fixing, not this one. <laughs> Store fruits will gladly take all the nutrients you give it. So not this one. You got to feed these guys. Otherwise, I mean, how, how is it going to be able to produce all these fruits for you? Yeah. So yeah, not that guy. Nitrogen fixing tree. Not this guy. Taiwanese grava also known as century grava. No, gladly take any nutrient that you can give it. The more the better. So, the tree that um, is also nitrogen fixing, which I will show you if you come here, is another Inga. He's in the ground two years. This is him. And literally, if you come closer, he's fruiting or setting um, fruit. Yeah, I mean, uh, look at all the ground cover, herbs and plants and plants. <laughs> I'm pretty sure without this guy being here, none of these are going to be as dense as they are now and this is all because of course i mean as the foliage gets get fall from the tree it all gets recycled down to the ground where the nutrient then is made available through the decomposition process by the insects worms microbes gets made available to the nearby plants nearby mangoes yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, again, this is just a theory that I've got, but without that tree there, the mangoes that you see here are not going to be as in the healthy shape that they are now. Just because, again, there, there is, yeah, I mean, all, all the trees, they're, they're, they're connected. They, they do really need one another. Uh, more so, you know, they, they <laughs> need more the, the main trees. But yeah, so yeah, so Inga produces these, you know, bean pots, which the insides, um, the, the ones I had anyway are, 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 are mildly sweet. It, it, it almost reminds me of, it, it's not overly sweet. It's not like a, a mango sweet not juicy like that it really reminds me of like a lightly sweetened wax jam boo with the consistency of cotton candy yeah but as you can see if you come here 
yeah i mean i i i do try my best to um give him structural support um you know literally trying to straighten out his life figuratively and, and literally but he he wants to go the way that he wants to go but i'm gonna i'm still trying but yeah i mean awesome trees they they do great here um once established they do great here uh the first year or two um they, they may struggle a bit to get a footing but once to the size they're, they're fine so yeah i mean off subject but look at all the pruning that i did in preparation for fall yeah which uh would essentially make it so where once the sun gets to that side it it it's nothing but just sunlight to everything underneath here and if you come here this is how you know fall is up upon us see the foliage it's not locking in any nutrients this is expected behavior this tree jujube tree being that it's deciduous reabsorbs all of its resources and nutrient back into the trunk into the branches and into the tree and to the roots and then what's going to happen is all those leaves will fall out that's essentially what's happening with um, all my neighbor's trees here yeah i mean this is falls upon us and the the wind is a good indication but yeah like look at all the leaves on the ground but yeah this is and also the the change of the color tropical fruit trees don't do that these guys will stay green for basically year round and will at the same time try the fruit so yeah just uh the, the inga also known as the ice cream bean tree and the uh, manana tamarind also known as gumachio goes by a lot of name but i i just know it as either gumachio or a tamarind uh manana tamarind that is awesome nitrogen fixing trees uh that's great in central valley once established first year help him out if you can uh, especially in the winter time but beyond that they are great i should mention just one last thing about these two trees they are not shade tolerant they will want full sun the more sun the better uh, in fact the manana tamarind in my backyard even though it was planted in the ground it was getting full central valley sun summer sun no issues so yeah these guys more sun the better even when they're young so anyhow all right have a good afternoon